Hi guys, this is Charles. I'm one of the surgeons at Southpaws. Um, we have a lovely little patient named Pudding here who has ruptured a disc at C4-5 in his neck and has been demonstrating odd clinical signs, um, mostly consistent with neck pain, but, um, uh, but also just being really reclusive and hiding in the corner and maybe a little bit of a root signature on the left forelimb. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone when we live stream again. Um, we do have the live chat going um, so you can ask me questions and I'll try to remember to answer them. And if I get into a sticky situation, I may interrupt the live stream just so I can concentrate on what I'm doing, although I don't anticipate it in this case. Um, So if somebody could please comment on the audio and make sure that you can hear me. We've got Hirsch from India, Oakland. Hi, Dr. Charles and team. Um, and Payosh is coming to visit us in um, January, I think. When are you arriving, Payosh? Um, I think it's mid-January, but I can't remember if it's January or March. Um, so Anyway, so I'm doing a midline incision here. And this is a little bit unusual because the CT scan wasn't entirely clear as far as where the, um, the lesion was. It had previously had a ventral slot done elsewhere about four years ago at C5-6. Um, and uh, so now it's had recurrence of clinical signs. And we, again, repeated the myelogram. You can see the myelogram on the screen, uh, sagittal view. Can you turn cautery please down to about 20? Yeah, you can give them a bonus, it's fine. So just incising through the sternohyoideus here. Uh, turn cautery down to 20, please. And so now we can see the trachea here. So you can see a thyroid right there on the one side and on the other side sitting there. And then recurrent laryngeal nerve is right there. So we'll be careful with that. Remember that the esophagus is on the left side, a little bit of the cervical trachea. And so we're gonna push everything over to the left to protect it so I don't stick it with a gelpie. Um, those are just uh, laryngeal muscles. Yeah. Um, really important when you're doing these, and I know that those of you who have watched a ventral slot live stream in the past know about this, but it's critical that you stay on midline. Now, as I pull this across here, I can see the carotid artery sitting right there, and the vagus sympathetic trunk is right there. And then this is probably, let me just see here. Uh, no. <laughs> Whatever dog that was, it's not the same one. Somebody else said, can you please describe in brief what we are doing in this procedure? Um, so just for those of you who are joining us late, this is a ventral slot procedure in a dog with a cervical disc rupture. I am going to reposition the lights, or the lights a little bit. I think I need to go that way and rotate it that way. So you can see the uh, carotid artery pulsing away there. So we'll try to avoid that guy. Um, so cervical disc C4-5. Now I'm just gonna palpate up here and try to find my wings of C6, which are there. So if that's C6 there, that's going to be C5, 6 there, and C4, 5 will be right there, although we've got a lot of spondylosis. So it's going to be a little bit hard to identify where everything is. And I'm a little concerned here because the recurrent laryngeal nerve seems to be 
out to the side a little bit. So I might come over to the opposite side. And recurrent laryngeal nerve is also to the side there. I just don't want to retract the recurrent laryngeal nerve if I can avoid it. Push the trachea to the side using my Gelpi. And I'm just going superficial to my vagus sympathetic trunk. I'm just trying to find my midline again. So that back there is C67. C67. I'm just retracting the recurrent laryngeal nerve over to the trachea and I can see my the previous surgery site it wasn't operated here it was done elsewhere but I can see where they operated so that's right there so my site is going to be right in here but it is hard to see everything number one because of the bridging spondylosis and number two because of the previous surgery I'm just going to look up and see so if you look on the CT scan the sagittal view and you look at where the yellow line is, that's C4, 5. So if we go back one, that's 5, 6. And then one more is C6, 7. And that C6, 7 has a huge um, bridging spondylosis there. Um, and so that's what I can palpate here. So that's 6, 7. That's 5, 6. And so 4, 5 is going to be somewhere in here, although it is kind of hard to palpate. Um, questions? We will not be fusing anything um, together, except it. We, so we won't intentionally fuse anything, but it will fuse because we'll be removing the disc, and so over time that is going to um, that is going to fuse together. So because I'm a little bit unclear on where my spaces are, I'm going to have to expose a little more than I normally do. And I've intentionally come in ob obliquely with the camera <clears throat> so that my head doesn't get in the way. Six, seven, I think that five, six is there. The other thing I can do is I can palpate up to C12. Well, that's hard to feel as well. I think that's two, three, three, four, four, five up there. And you can see that Mary is evacuating the, um, the smoke, and we had a discussion about this, and there's no question that the smoke from the cautery is, there's some nasty stuff in it. It's just a, a question as to whether there's actually any clinical evidence that it causes cancer. And, I mean, if you can avoid exposure to something that causes cancer, it's probably not a bad idea. Um, so we basically should all stay inside all the time um, and not eat any sugar or chocolate. <laughs> um, so they say that if you smoked a gram of tissue, like put a gram of soft tissue in a pipe and smoked it, you'd get the equivalent of about three cigarettes as far as all the toxins and stuff that are in there. Yeah. Um, question about whether I cauterize the thyroid vein. If it gets in the way, I do. Usually on, like if I'm operating at C4, 5, I probably wouldn't have to. If you're up at C2, 3, there's a chance that you would have to cauterize that. Um, not, look, not really. Obviously, you know, if there's anything like that that you can avoid, you're better off, but.
I've probably, I know I've said this before, but um, operating at the wrong site is the most common reason for neurosurgeons to get sued. So we'll try not to do that. Although that is human neuro neurosurgeons. Here's my bipolar pedal. My bipolar doesn't seem to be working. And there is a little bit of twitching from direct muscle stimulation from the quarter. And every time that happens, I get somebody writing in saying, the dog was awake. You're the meanest person in the world. When in fact, it is just direct muscle stimulation. Just waiting, our anesthetist is having a little bit of difficulty getting readings. Can you turn off the anesthetic, please? Just make sure that our carotid artery is still pulsing away. Yeah, carotid is pulsing. Yeah, carotid is pulsing nicely there, so. Um, do you need to turn down the anesthetic a little bit? What's that? Okay. Maybe turn, change your lead on the ECG and see if you can get less interference there. Change it to one. See if that's any better. Now change it to three. back and palpating so that's definitely six seven that's going to be five six there that was operated on previously so if I've got a disc here that tells me that I have to be at the right space so there is a disc there so we'll just switch over to an 11 blade and we'll cut out the disc So I'm just making two vertical cuts in the disc and then two horizontal cuts to get out the ventral annulus fibrosis here. Uh, so the the issue of pain after can we get a um, five mil burr please? Um, the issue with pain after um, removal of the disc. What, once we remove all the disc material, this will eventually fuse. And so, if it was a larger dog and there was a lot of instability, I will go ahead and fuse it. But in a small dog, you don't really have an issue.
And there is a disc replacement system. Um, I have never used it, but there are some people that are really happy with it. Um, I might switch to a four mil burr, please. Sorry, thank you. Are you happier now? Yes. Great, thanks. Uh, so you guys should have a pretty nice view of where I'm drilling. This is a tiny little dog. How much does she weigh? About five kilos, three kilos? Four kilos. Four kilos. Yeah, four kilogram dog. Someone else, what were you? Little Chihuahua. Big flush plate. Thank you. We can see that it's getting white at the bottom of the slot. So that tells me that I'm getting get back to cortical bone. I think I'm close to a sinus. No, I think that's just bone bleeding. I'm just going to extend the neck on my burr just to give me a little bit more length there. Big flush. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, not, look, not with spinal surgery, not really. I mean, you know, if I was doing a ferret, I might not like it, but... Um, <laughs> Like dogs are fine, and any size dog. Okay, so I'm just picking the disc material out here. Getting a nice big chunk of disc material out. If you didn't hear the question before, somebody asked if it's harder to work on small patients. And I really, I really don't think it is. Within reason. I mean, if you have something really tiny. Um, can you... I'll try to do it. I'm going to just try to zoom in a little bit. So I can reach the zoom. better view in there. Uh, where is my pick? And basically I need to keep going 
until either it bleeds too much and I'm worried about it, or I can see the spinal cord. So I don't think that's spinal cord yet. I think that's dorsal longitudinal ligament. It's too fibrous and the spinal cord is generally almost blue. Let's see if I can find a little curette. Is that Dr. John? Yeah. Hi, John. We, great we miss you. Yeah. Somebody was watching your interview today, and everybody missed you and had very nice and fond things to say about you, John. I might get my needle and make a even more delicate little pick. So I've taken my needle and put an angle on the end of it. So that's dorsal longitudinal ligament right there that I'm pulling up and dinging the sinus. Can I please get um, some gel foam? Put a little bit of gel foam in there. It looks huge. Actually, not as big as it looks. We'll wait five minutes. So now we've got a five minute wait here. What should we talk about? Um, Mary's laughing at me, thinking I'm going to tell some inappropriate joke, which I would never do. <laughs> on a live stream. Um, so now's the chance you guys can ask any questions that you might have about anything related to surgery. Can we mark a five minute um, timer? Thank you. Um, time for jokes, <laughs> John says. Um, yeah, I just have to be very selective, John, um, with my jokes. It makes it a bit tricky. Uh, what did you do in so this is gel foam. Um, it's a gelatin foam, which is intended just to act as a scaffold for a clot formation. So I had hit the sinus when I was trying to pick out the um, pick out the dorsal longitudinal ligament, which I don't really need to take out because all of the disc material was ventral to it. But um, uh, so I damaged the sinus, and so now I've just put that gel foam in, and it's going to uh, give about five minutes for the um, for the bleeding to clot, and so we'll just leave it alone until then. Any other questions about anything? You can't use electric cautery on the sinus. It doesn't work. 
and plus you're right on the spinal cord, so I would be reluctant to do that anyway. Um, I have heard of dogs bleeding to, to death um, because of sinus bleeding, and that usually comes from people that keep trying to, um, like, cauterize the bleeder or grab it with a hemostat. You should really just um, pack it off with gel foam and just wait, and then if, if I were to pull this off in five minutes and it was still bleeding, I would just pack it back off and, and leave it alone. And if I was concerned about um, if I was concerned about uh, not having gotten enough disc material out, I would come back in the next day. And we as veterinarians are very reluctant to go back in and do what's called a second look procedure. They do it all the time in humans. Um, and what you do is if you've got bleeding or any other problems, uh, problem, you just um, you just pack it off and come back the next day and you'll find that uh, most cases the bleeding has stopped. And if you've got excessive abdominal bleeding or you've done a total ear canal ablation or you've done a ventral slot and there's just bleeding that you can't control, just pack it off and come back the next day. Um, and that's something that we have to be more willing to do as veterinarians. Now there's a comment uh, just asking, um, join late, what's going on? So. Um, this is a ventral slot C4-5. You can see it on the sagittal CT scan. Um, that space, two spaces down from it is C6-7. You can see a lot of bridging spondylosis there. It previously had a ventral slot at C5-6 so at the adjacent site, and we're at C4-5. Um, and so we've done our ventral slot. We've gotten all the way down, removed all the disc material, and I went picking around in there and uh, and damage the vertebral sinus. So we're just gonna pack that off for a little while. Um, a question about how big the slot can be before it causes problems with um, vertebral stability. And the answer to that is about 50% of the width of the vertebral body um, is about the limit. So you don't wanna go any wider than that. Lengthwise, it doesn't really matter because the length doesn't affect the circumferential stability of the, of the disc. It's just the width of the, um, of the ventral slot. So 50% of the width of the spinal uh, or the vertebral body. Um, question about will you be repairing bridging spondylosis and we will not. We would assume that that's stable um, and that would have been going on for a long time and this gut dog's clinical signs have only been present for about 24 hours. So, um, and then, uh, comment from John thanks saying thank you um, and so yeah that's about it any other questions about anything related to surgery or life in general career decisions what kind of plants you should put in your garden what the best no but I can make something up what the best dog breeds are what my favorite food is if I couldn't have a lab what breed dog would I have? I would probably have a pointer, a German Shorter Pointer. Oh, I really like them. Okay. Or, Actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I hate to say it, but I really like brachycephalic breeds. I really oh. like pugs and English bulldogs and stuff. Right. Because I can fix all their problems yeah. and then, and then, yeah. So five minutes is up? Yeah. Wow. Normally it goes by slower than that. All right. So now I can pull out my... All right, so that bleeding has stopped. And we can have another look in there and see, just make sure that I'm confident that I've gotten all the disc material out. Also, my suction has stopped. Can, um, can you hand me that? I can get it right here. Right. Just need to put a trocar through my suction. So I am confident that I've gotten all the disc out, but I am gonna pick around in there a little bit more because that's what I do. go back up there cranially because that's what caused the problem in the first place. So 
So I don't know if you guys can see the white at the bottom of the hole, but that's dorsal longitudinal ligament right adjacent to the spinal cord. All right, I reckon I'm going to leave that. So that's pretty much done. Um, so what's another way to stop bleeding if you... Um, if you don't have gel foam, the best thing you can do is pack some muscle in there because muscle has um, tissue plasminogen um, activator and all kinds of clotting factors and collagen and stuff like that. So if I did not have gel foam, that's what I would do. Um, can I get some epivacaine, please? So I'm just going to pack some epivacaine or squirt some epivacaine into the muscle and then we'll be all finished. Kath is starting my TPLO next door. I'm watching her closely through the window on the surgery suite. But she doesn't even know I'm talking about her, so kind of no point in teasing her. All right, so this is mepivacaine, which is a long-acting uh, sodium channel blocker, so local anesthetic. I'll just put in a couple, oh, did I get the three OPDS? Thanks. And look, if you really have nothing else, you can just apply pressure with your finger or with gauze um, and just wait a while and it, the bleeding will stop. So you don't even, you know, you don't need gel foam necessarily or a uh, cut piece of muscle. Everybody watch, you see that um, the slip knot. So I've done a square knot there. Can you guys see the square knot? And I just pull on one side, convert it into a slip knot, and then just pull and it goes right down. And then I pull it apart and lock it in place. Just, uh, and when you, Cut, just make sure you don't have, let your blade of your scissors stick out too far on the other side so you don't cut anything important over there. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> you are miles away, so it's fine. I just cut with the tip of the scissors. And unfortunately, the incisional gastropexy um, is in the wrong surgery suite, so I won't be able to live stream that, but hopefully I'll be able to do another one sometime. Uh, can you zoom out, please, um, Demi? Thank you.
I'm just reposing my sternohyoidus muscles. I feel the view on my loops is about five centimeters. So if I miss the, the loop with my needle drivers, I can't tell until it's right down. So we have a new surgical intern that started yesterday, Sarah. So you'll be seeing more of her. Yeah, <laughs> there is a probationary period. <laughs> Just put in intradermals, please. All right, so I'm finished. I'm gonna come over to the computer and see if there are any questions that I hadn't answered. And then we'll end the live stream. Let's see here. Uh, Royal Family Pets. Good luck, mate, to Kath. Uh, John says, good luck, mate, Kath. Um, pass it on to her and I will. Um, so after this surgery, what post-op care? We just restrict activity for about four weeks, anti-inflammatories. Um, we usually put on a fentanyl patch, although this guy's pretty tiny. Um, no antibiotics, four weeks of rest, physiotherapy if they have neurodeficits. Um, and that's about it, so. Um, and there are no more questions, it seems like. Um, so, um, thanks a lot everybody for watching. Special hello to John. Um, and we hope to see you again soon, and um, we'll talk to you later. All right, so.